on my honor, Chapter 8. Joel! The angry voice came immediately after the slammed door. Joel, where are you? Joel lay on his bed, on his back in the middle of his bed, staring at the darkened light fixture. The shadow of the fixture stretched across the ceiling like an elasticized gray spider and bent down the wall. When he had first lain down on the bed, the shadow had been a small blob right next to the light. Joel, are you up there? came his father's voice again, and Joel shook his head slowly from side to side. No, he wasn't up here. He wasn't anywhere. Hadn't Miss Zabransky told his father that? All afternoon the telephone had rung at frequent intervals. Then the doorbell, ding-dong, ding-dong, knock, knock, rattle, rattle. First Bobby calling, obviously sent across the street by Miss Zabransky. Then Miss Zabransky herself, Joel, Tony. But the house key was in Joel's pocket, and no one could get in except his parents when they got home from work. They had their own keys. Joel had lain there through the long afternoon and waited for one of them to get home. He had thought it would be his mother who would be there first, though. She usually did get home before his dad because she started work earlier in the morning. The papers for his route had been dropped on his front porch about two hours before. He had heard the thunk when they hit the concrete, but... He hadn't been able to make himself get off the bed to do anything about them. I could be gone on my route when they come home, he had thought, but still he hadn't moved. Joel! His door shot open with a report like a firecracker, and, as if connected with the door by a spring, he leaped off his bed. The blood rushed from his brain with a sudden movement, and he swayed giddily in the middle of his floor. So you are here. Miss Sobransky thought you were. Joel didn't say anything. He studied a spot on the floor in front of his father's feet. What are you doing? Locking yourself in the house all day? What do you mean by this kind of behavior? Joel's gaze traveled to his father's belt. His father was now looking around the room. Where's Tony? he asked. Miss Sobransky said you two boys spent the entire afternoon locked in the house. Tony's not here, Joel said. Where is he then? Joel gave a small shrug. His father ran his fingers through his hair in exacerbation. What's going on, Joel? This isn't like you. Sneaking into the house, leaving Tony's mother to worry? He took a step towards Joel, but Joel didn't flinch. He looked into his father's face, waiting for a blow that he was sure would come. Must come. His father had never hit him, but he would now. I guess I fell asleep, he said. I didn't hear a thing. He spoke out of a deep calm that had taken hold of him sometime in the long afternoon. Besides, he added, it's my house. I can come here if I want to. Now. His father would hit him now. Joel's father quit tugging on his hair and dropped his hands. Of course it's your house, he said quietly. But you don't have permission to lock yourself in here when Miss Zabransky is supposed to be looking after you. She wouldn't even, she wouldn't have even known you were here if Bobby hadn't caught a glimpse of you going through the door. Snoop, Joel said. What? His father asked, beginning to look exacerbated again. Never mind. Well, where is Tony, then? His mother will want to know. In the river, Joel thought. But out loud, he said, On the road to Starved Rock? His father tipped his head to one side. He looked skeptical. Alone? he asked. I came back, Joel said. Starved Rock was too far, so I came back. Was this what he had planned to say? He wasn't sure. Bobby appeared in the doorway, his fists cocked and his hips an imitation of his mother's favorite stance when she was cross with either of them. You guys aren't supposed to be in the house when Mommy and Daddy are gone, he said in his best boy, you're going to get it voice. So what? Joel snapped back, instantly deflated. Bobby ducked his head, tucking his thumb into his mouth. Joel's father was studying his face minutely. You mean to tell me, he said, that Tony rode all the way to Star Rock by himself? I guess he did, Joel said. He lied to me, you know, about his mother's giving him permission to go. I found that out from Mr. Bransky, too. Joel could feel his father's gaze like a burning pressure. He held his breath, waiting for the moment when all would be known. But his father only shook his head, looked away. I feel responsible. You are responsible, Joel wanted to say. But instead, he asked, his voice dull and flat, Do you want me to go see if I can find him? No, of course not his father sighed. It's too far to go back on your bike. Anyway, you need to get started on your paper route. He turned and started out of the room, calling back over his shoulder. 
I'll telephone the, the Zabranskis and tell them that Tony will probably be late. Very late, Joel thought. And he had a strange urge to laugh. Tony's dead. Don't you know that? He wanted to yell. But since it was obvious that his father didn't know, that his father didn't know anything, he kicked the leg of his bed and muttered, Frigging newspapers! Bobby's eyes grew round. But his father, though, had he... But his father, though he must have heard, didn't turn back. He wasn't going to do anything, no matter what. Can I help you with your route today, Joel? Bobby asked. Bobby was always wanting to help him with his route, with his scout projects, with anything that he did. Sometimes Bobby even helped him when he was, uh, when it was his turn on the dishes. Dumb little kid. Joel didn't usually let Bobby go along on his route, though. Tony went along lots of times, but he had his own bike. Balancing Bobby on his bike, along with a load of papers, was a real trick. Besides, Tony really helped. He didn't just tug along, asking questions and getting in the way. Tony, would the Zabranskis ever find him? The teenager had said something about a body maybe washing up in one of the dams. Next week. Next month. Maybe. Why hadn't Joel told his father about Tony's going down to the river to swim? About his going on to Starved Rock while Tony went to the river? Then, his father could tell the Zabranskis and the Zabranskis would know where to look. Somehow, nothing had come out right. Can I, Joel? Please? Bobby repeated. And when Joel looked down at his brother, at the eagerness in Bobby's upturned face, his throat closed, and he had to turn away. Yeah, he managed to croak. I guess you can help me with my route today. Woo-wee! Bobby yelled, and he clapped his pudgy hands, and he skittered out of the room and back down the stairs. Joel squared his shoulders and took a deep breath. Then he stopped, breathed again, sniffed. What was that smell of in the air? Almost like... Almost exactly like dead fish. Joel sniffed his arm, his shirt. That's where it was coming from. Him. Joel drew the neck of his shirt up over his nose and inhaled deeply. There was no question. The stink of the river had followed him home. And his father hadn't noticed that either. Joel pulled the shirt off, got another from the drawer, and a new shirt was fresh. It smelled like his mother's fabric softener. But the light fragrance couldn't cover up the stench of the river clinging to his skin. Joel started down the steps. Maybe nobody knew what the river smelled like. Bobby was holding the screen door open for his, for their mother. Looking tired and a little bit frazzled, she set down the grocery bag that she was carrying and came to the bottom of the stairs. She stood with her hands on her hips exactly the way Bobby had when he was imitating her earlier. What on earth were you doing today, Joel? Miss Sobransky says you and Tony hid in the house all afternoon? Joel closed his eyes. It was going to start all over again. That was the problem with having two parents. You never heard anything only once. He drew in his breath, composed his face, and continued down the stairs. There was nothing that he could do about the smell. Tony wasn't here, he said, and I wasn't hiding. I was lying down. Lying down? Joel's mother reached to feel his forehead. What's the matter? Are you sick? No, Joel answered, submitting to the cool hand pressed on his head. Just not feeling good for a little bit. Why did you and Tony do what did, what did you and Tony do today? his mother asked, her other hand circling the back of his head, as though she could feel his temperature better by pressing with both hands. Her eyes were on were on his face. Just rode our bikes. The musky river smell was so strong it made his eyes burn. She had to smell it. There was no way that she could miss it. How far did you go? Joel jerked free, ducking and coming up a few feet down the hall with his back to his mother. Not very far. Tony was going to ride out to Starved Rock. Dad said that he could, but I didn't feel good. Like I told you, so I came home. He couldn't tell what she was doing behind him, as she was, and he didn't want to turn around to look. Starved Rock, she repeated, but that's so far. Dad gave us permission, he said, and then he amended. He said I could go. Well, a light sigh, you'd better get busy with your route before people start calling. They'll be complaining about their papers being late. Joel felt his body go limp. His mother hadn't smelled the river. She hadn't even guessed that he was lying. Relief swirled in his brain, curiously mixed with anger. Didn't anybody around here pay attention to anything? He pushed out the screen door, letting it slam behind him, hard.